And aren't there a lot of different messages on food? Carbs are good. Ah, no, actually they're bad. Ah, fat is bad. Ah, actually it's good. Do, do you ever think when are they going to make up their minds? <laughs> hey everyone, that was Barbara O'Neill. Today's video looks into a fascinating topic with a leading figure in the world of natural health, Barbara O'Neill. She has spent over two and a half decades empowering people to take charge of their well-being through natural approaches. In this episode, Barbara will delve into a fascinating and crucial topic, the body's pH balance, the role of food in maintaining this balance, and its implications for cancer prevention and treatment. She will explain how the body's pH levels can influence overall health, including the risk of developing chronic diseases like cancer. Settle in and get comfy as Barbara O'Neill guides us through this crucial connection between pH, nutrition, and potentially lowering your risk of chronic disease, including cancer. Let's embark on this journey to unlock a deeper understanding of our bodies. Here's Barbara to tell us more. I'm going to come at what is the best food to eat from the pH balance. pH is, means potential hydrogen. And when you dissolve acid in a solution, it gives off hydrogen ions. When you dissolve alkaline in solution, it gives off hydroxy ions. So the pH scale is potential hydrogen, potential hydroxy. So I'll do it in everyday language now. It's the acid alkaline balance. So up one end, we have acid. And up the other end of the acid alkaline scale, we have alkaline. In the middle, we've got neutral. Neutral is neither acid nor alkaline. So the acid scale, it's naught. Alkaline, it's 14. And in the middle, seven is neutral. Blood has a reading on the pH scale. And blood's reading on the pH scale is between 7.35 and 7.4. It will always be within that range. If blood pH does go up to eight, that person will go into a coma and die of alkalosis. If blood pH drops down to 7.22, that person will go into a coma and die of acidosis. So there cannot be much variation there. Is our blood pH something we should be concerned with? We don't need to worry about the pH of our blood because there are two organs that are constantly keeping it within that range. One is your lungs. And this explains why you start breathing very deeply when you exercise. We don't choose to breathe deeply, do we? But when we're getting to the top of that hill, you're starting to breathe very deeply, especially if you run up the hill. Well, why does that happen? Well, the cells need more oxygen. Remember, more oxygen gives you a better delivery of fuel. Plus, as the oxygen and the glucose are being burnt, they're giving off carbon dioxide and that has to be got rid of. Because if it doesn't, the carbon dioxide builds up in the blood and that creates a more acid environment. So that is why we start breathing deeply. So deep breathing helps to keep the balance of the pH in the blood as it should be. The other organ is your kidneys. Your kidneys do this in a fascinating way. How do the kidneys work? Let's go to the smallest unit in the kidney, which is a little nephron. It's a little filtering unit. It's called the Bowman's capsule. And out of the Bowman's capsule, the filtrate comes out. And then the filtrate weaves around these tubules and is eliminated via the bladder. So what happens with these little filtering units is the blood comes in, blood comes in, weaves around the filtering units and then the blood weaves around the tubules. So let me show you where in the kidneys are these little filtering units. So the medulla is the middle part, the cortex is the outside and all the little filtering units basically sit on the outside and then the tubules weave down like this, then into the into the ureter, into the bladder and out via the urethra comes the urine. So what is the correlation with the kidneys? 
So why am I talking about the kidneys with pH? Let's say the pH of the blood is getting too acid. Well, it's in this area of the blood going through the tubules that the pH is, is tested. We filter out, we only filter out 1.5 litres of uh, urine a day, but out of these filtering units, 1800 litres is filtered out. So where does that go? There's a reabsorption here. And it's in the reabsorption area that pH is being monitored. So let's say the pH of the blood is getting too acid, and we'll look at why that is in the moment. Then extra acid is dropped into the tubules to be urinated out. But let's say the pH of the blood is going too alkaline. Well, it is here that extra acid is pulled back out of the tubules and into the blood. So that is how the kidneys are constantly monitoring and balancing, if necessary, the pH of the blood. And so tell us more about the kidneys. So you can see that the kidneys not only filter the blood, they play an important role in what's called homeostasis, in balancing the body, in balancing the pH, in balancing the sodium and water balance in the body, in balancing blood pressure. I don't think you'll ever look at your kidneys the same again, will you? Mm -hmm. You can see why the kidneys are the other organ that help to balance the pH. How do the kidneys work with the cell? Even though the blood cannot change, the pH of the cell can. The pH of the cell should be approximately 6.5. That's very slightly acid and there is a reason for that. The most acidic substance is sulfuric acid and sulfuric acid travels at the speed of light. The most alkaline mineral is calcium and on the scale of speed, calcium doesn't even move. The hydroponic gardener He's always testing the pH of the water that his plants grow in because if the water goes too acid, the roots burn. If the water goes too alkaline, he doesn't get the speed of uptake of minerals out of the water and into the plant. So you can see that very slightly acid is important for the speed of all those little chemical reactions that are millions of them are happening right now. Any other examples of the effect of pH? Have you ever had a swimming pool? You have to test the pH every morning because if the water goes too acid, the pipes corrode. If the water goes too alkaline, algae grows on the pipes. So just as for the hydroponic gardener and just as for the swimming pool, the pH of the human body is important because at different pHs, diseases grow. And at different pHs, it's very hard for disease to grow. So let's, let's have a look at that. 2.6. This is where Coca-Cola sits. It's a killer. It's toxic. I was in the Fiji Islands and I was lecturing to some school children there. This is about 10 years ago. And the principal of the school said, I know the Coca-Cola factory. And he said, and I know they clean their machinery with the Coca-Cola. <laughs> bit scary, isn't it? The gardener, he aims for a soil pH of 6.5. Tell us how this affects disease and cancer. But in a cellular pH of 5.5, this is where disease thrives, especially yeast, funguses, and cancer. Tell us more about cancer. Cancer loves acid. Anything else that cancer loves? Cancer also loves no oxygen. So knowing those things, it makes a lot of sense to alkalize the tissues. And even though there's the drop of only one point, the drop of one point means 60% less oxygen available at the cellular level. Tell us the third thing that cancer loves. The other thing cancer loves is sugar. So these are the three common denominators I find. So how do you manage cancer? And so when people come to us wanting help to conquer cancer, you see what we do? 
We suggest a diet that's highly alkalizing. We suggest ways to oxygenate the body. In fact, some health retreats have hyperbaric chambers. Have you heard of those? We have one and it puts uh, oxygen in under pressure. And we also greatly eliminate the glucose, the sugars going into the body. Highly alkalizing foods are essential for maintaining a balanced pH level in the body, which can help improve overall health and prevent various ailments. Leafy greens such as spinach, kale, and Swiss chard are among the most alkalizing, providing essential nutrients and antioxidants. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts also contribute to an alkaline diet and offer numerous health benefits, including cancer-fighting properties. Additionally, fruits such as lemons, despite their acidic taste, have an alkalizing effect on the body once metabolized. Other alkalizing fruits include avocados, tomatoes, and watermelon. Root vegetables like sweet potatoes, beets, and carrots, as well as spices like turmeric and ginger, also help to maintain an alkaline environment. Incorporating these foods into your diet can promote better digestion, increase energy levels, and support a healthy immune system. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.